Welcome to Get the Facts, I'm Enthrose Campbell. Today we're discussing dengue fever. Our resource person is Chief Medical Officer of the Ministry of Health, Dr. Jacqueline Bisesa McKenzie. Stay with us and get the facts. Welcome to the program, Dr. Bisesa McKenzie. Thank you. Right, so the government has confirmed a dengue outbreak. What does that mean? Well, first of all, I would say that dengue is endemic to Jamaica. What that means is that since 1977, when dengue was introduced into the island, we have been having cases every year. So we have cases every year and throughout the year. However, for the year, there are times at which there are more dengue cases because there are times that the dengue virus, which is carried by the Aedes aegypti mosquito, the Aedes aegypti breeds and become more frequent, more in number at certain times of the year. And so therefore from August to December each year, we have more cases of dengue in keeping with more mosquito being around. Now, so therefore, if we look from January to December, we have what we call a seasonal pattern where we, the numbers go down March, April, May, and then they start going back up. August to November, we are peak about November and then we come back down. Now, so at different times of the year, the numbers are dependent on the time of the year. When we have an outbreak is when we have more than is expected for that time period. Okay. So in December of 2018, we had more than was expected for December 2018. Yes. Mm -hmm. To go back a little, you said it is endemic to Jamaica. Tell us what do you mean by that? That means that the virus is here in the country um, it doesn't have to be brought in by anybody for us to get a case of dengue here. And it is endemic here. It is here because the mosquito that the, the, the virus lives in, multiplies in, is here in the country, which is the Aedes aegypti mosquito. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, some months we have more cases than others. How do we, who decides on, on the cases and it, what are the methods of testing? to confirm cases? Okay, well, because we have the cases right throughout the year, we have what we call a surveillance system in the country where we depend on clinicians in the field all across the island to report in whenever they have certain illnesses. So certain illnesses are what we call reportable illnesses. They are illnesses that we have a concern about to know when the cases are rising. Dengue is one of those. So the physicians, they make a notification to the Ministry of Health so we can track how much is happening throughout the year. When we see those numbers going up, then we are looking to see, is it above what is expected for that time of the year? Yes. Now, how do we, so that is how we get a notification that I, as a clinician out there, I see a case, it's fever, joint pain, and I think this is dengue. I make a notification to the ministry. Now, when the ministry gets that notification, it looks at the case and it says, does what did the doctor describe meet what we call dengue? Does it meet the definition? If it does, then it is a suspected case of dengue. Now, our numbers in terms of what we consider to be an outbreak is dependent on the suspected cases. It is not dependent on confirmation. Confirmation, let us be sure that this is in fact dengue because a lot of viral illnesses look alike. And so you have Zika, you have chikungunya, you have influenza, and different viruses look the same. And so therefore the confirmation is really about making sure. But the actual, to say that we have dengue, we base that on the clinical findings, what is reported and what is called a suspected case. Okay, because there is this quick test mm -hmm. uh, that, that some doctors do. Is that accepted mm -hmm. as confirming well, a case? We have, we have different tests for dengue that we use to say if it is dengue or not. Now, when dengue, when a patient develops dengue, there are different phases of the illness. And the test that is done is dependent on the phase of the illness. And that is why we cannot depend on the confirmation. Because in the first five days of the fever, 
So we call day one when the person develops a fever. The fever usually lasts about five to seven days. During that period, that first period of the illness, you can pick up the virus in the blood. And so you can test for the virus. Now, of course, if the patient presents to the doctor after the fever has gone, then there's a likelihood that the virus will not be picked up. And you test for what we call an antibody, which is the, bo the body's reaction to the virus. So dependent on when the test is done, you can see if, it is, if dengue is there or if it is suspected. Now, the test that the doctors have they take those tests in the panel that they have, have three tests for three different things. It tests for the antibodies, two different types of antibodies, and it tests for the virus as well. Now, the two different types of antibodies, one of them called IgG, is there once you have had dengue. If you had it when you were a child and you are 25 now, if you test it, it's going to be IgG positive. It does not mean you're having dengue now. Okay, so it depends, it, the, using that test, the doctor has to be very careful to look how many of the positive, how many of the three things that they test for is, is, are positive. Because if it's only one, we cannot rely on that. But if two or more is positive, then it is a better test to say that yes, okay. this could be dengue. So once I have dengue, that's it, I won't ever have it. Oh, that there strain. Are, uh, there are four types of dengue. Yes. And once you get one type, as far as we know now, you will not get that one type again. again. But you can get the other types. And what is important to note is that after getting dengue the first time, the repeated infections can are, tend to be more severe. Okay, we take a break now. When we come back, we look at the illness and what government is doing to, to counter this problem. Mosquitoes can spread diseases such as dengue fever. Protect yourself from mosquito bites. Use a mosquito repellent that contains DEET. Sleep under a mosquito net, close windows before dark, open windows and doors during fogging, cover your body as much as possible and wear light colored clothing. Protect yourself from dengue and other mosquito borne diseases. Do your part to prevent mosquito breeding in your surroundings. A message from the Ministry of Health. Welcome back. We're talking dengue today, and our resource person is Chief Medical Officer, Ministry of Health, Dr. Jacqueline Bisesa McKenzie. Doc, let us start now with the disease itself. We know it is transmitted by the Aedes aegypti mosquito. Tell us about the transmission. Okay, so the, the Aedes aegypti mosquito, it, first of all, they live for about a month, okay? During that time, the female, mo the female mosquito will lay eggs about five to six times. And each time it lays, an e it lays, it lays about 300 eggs. Now the female mosquito, the female mosquito will bite persons in order to get blood, in order to, to have her, he her eggs. Now the mosquito, when the mosquito bites you, then if the mosquito is infected with the dengue virus, then it takes you about five to seven days for you to develop the, this illness. And the illness is usually a mild illness. For about 70 to more than 70% of patients, it's a mild illness that will present with fever, joint pains, headaches, pain behind the eye, nausea, vomiting, and most of it will resolve within five to seven days. However, there are some cases that will move into what a more severe phase, which is called severe dengue. Now, there are warning signs that persons who have dengue can look out for to see, am I developing severe dengue or is there a possibility? And those symptoms include if you have persistent vomiting, meaning that you have three, about three to four episodes of vomiting in the hour, that's persistent vomiting. If you have belly pain, if you have any signs such as persistent restlessness, listlessness, tiredness, and you're not feeling better, 
after about five days, the fever is settling down, but instead of getting, you're getting better, you're getting worse. These are all warning signs. Of the severe case. Of a severe, severe dengue. Of severe dengue. Yes. And also importantly, we also look out for a rash. Some persons will have a rash, and that rash may actually be tiny little bleeding spots under the skin. Okay? So if we have any of those, and we should seek medical attention, because at that point, you need to be monitored. You need to be monitored closely to make sure that you're well hydrated, yes. and you also be monitored to make sure that there are no signs of any bleeding. So who's most at risk for the severe case of dengue? Well, if any person. It, 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 the, the presentation of dengue can be quite variable. Of course, the very young, the very old, persons who have a decreased in, decrease in their immunity, persons who are sick with chronic illnesses, are more likely to develop severe cases of dengue and of any illness because your body has less ability to respond. Okay? We have illnesses also that compromise your ability to clot. Okay, so if you have any of those um, illnesses, if you have like blood diseases or diseases that you are on medication to prevent clotting, then of course it will make you more likely to bleed. And so therefore you will tend to get a more yes. severe cases. Yes. Or sicklers also tend to be at risk. So we have the very young or sicklers in particular, those are the cases that we have to look out for. Right. So tell us what, what we should do when we see these signs, when we notice these signs. When we see, first of all, if we suspect that we have dengue, most cases you can manage at home. If it's just fever and headache, most people will take Panadol, Paracetamol or Cetamol and they will feel much better. If you are not getting better, then you should see your physician. And this does not mean necessarily at the hospital. You can go to your health center or you can see your general practitioner. Now your general practitioner or the person in your health center will tell you what are the signs to look out for. If you have any of those warning signs that we mentioned, then you should be in a facility that you can be monitored. Yes. Now we can monitor some patients in the health centers, but most of the cases that we would need to monitor would need to be in the hospitals, right. okay? Are we seeing an increase in the cases of dengue or severe dengue at this point? Mm. Well, we are seeing an increase in the number of cases and that is why we are persistent in our messaging and we are persistent in trying to get rid of the breeding sites for the mosquito. We have seen an increase in the number of severe cases of dengue for this outbreak and of course the warning signs in particular that we want persons to look out for to ensure that they reach the hospital early. Now, the course of the illness while you are in hospital, we have to remember that it's mostly a monitoring and intervening if we see anything that is happening. There is no cure for dengue. So therefore, the only cure you can have is not to get dengue in yes. the first place. How can we help that? Well, the mosque, very, very simple. The message has been out there all year that you have to reduce the breeding sites of the mosquito. The mo this mosquito is a mosquito that likes to be around people. It needs our blood in order to reproduce. And therefore, it is around your house, in your immediate surroundings, that they will breed. So you need to look for anywhere that there is water, stagnant water, that the mosquito can breed in. So if it is in the plants, in the tires around the houses, certain plants themselves will accumulate water. P persons need to make it a habit that every week they go around the house and they look for these breeding sites. Shrubs, when the grass is growing up, the moisture accumulates there and the mosquito will breed. Garbage, it is very important to remove all the garbage from around the house because the mosquitoes will breed in the containers that are there. So it's very, very important for the individual, the household member to take an active part because, as I said, once you get dengue, the severity of the illness we cannot predict. The course of the illness we cannot stop. We can only monitor and treat what we see happening. We have to wait out the course of the illness. Prevent it, you must prevent 
yourself from getting bitten. Why that? It is a fact that the severe case of dengue can lead to, to death. The severe case of dengue can lead to a decrease in the blood supply to vital organs in the body that can cause failure of those organs, the kidneys. It can cause um, problems with the heart, with the brain, with the liver, and it can cause severe bleeding that can lead to death. Yes. So tell us about the government's initiatives to, to combat the, the cases as much as So the ministry can. has been working. Um, we have been very, very active since the beginning of last year in terms of the public education program. The main thrust is towards preventing the breeding of the mosquito. Yes. And so therefore we have to make sure that the public is aware. Our main campaign has been to get into the households, in the premises, into the communities. We have been engaging what we call vector control workers since July last year. And this was not just last year, because previously this was really as a, res as a intervention for Zika. We never stopped after Zika. The ministry has its regular routine program that goes from month to month. But at the start of the rainy season, we have an enhanced program that we bring in more people to be out there. And they go into the communities, they search for the, the breeding sites, they destroy the breeding sites by, play, by putting pellets in the water to destroy the larvae. And of course, we do the fogging to destroy the adult mosquitoes. We have been working with our partners, such as USAID. The Red Cross has come on board to have more persons out there. We're working with the HOPE program to get more persons on the ground into the communities. Our regular program would have ended in December when we would have slowed down because we are in an outbreak. We have engaged more people to continue this thrust towards education and towards searching and destroying the breeding sites. We also have to say that in terms of the vector control work, we have engaged more, um, more private facilities, more vehicles to get fogging done to go into all the communities. We have engaged quite a lot of persons to be out there to be doing all of this vector control work. We, we have been working as well with other partners such as PAHO who are helping us with training and with, with building our laboratory support in terms of um, being able to do the testing. The CDC as well, as well has been helping us with testing. Our local persons, including the national works agencies, are helping with the cleaning of the drains and the National Solid Waste Management Company, who is also doing the removal of garbage from the areas. So a lot of persons have come on board and have been on board continuously to help us with fighting this problem. Thank you, Chief Medical Officer, Ministry of Health, Dr. Jacqueline Bisesa McKenzie. There you have it, the facts on dengue. Now it's time for you to do your part. See you next time.